الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يكسب اسما فإنما يكسبه على نفسه وكان الله عليما حكيما ومن يكسب خطيئة أو اسما ثم يرم به بريئا ومن ثم بيرم به بريئا فقد احتمل بهتانا واسما مبينا صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين امين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you must have noted, we are starting our study today from ayah number 111 of Surah An-Nisa. Just to have a brief review, I told you that these ayat can be grouped regarding different addresses. In Surah An-Nisa, in some passages, the address is directed towards the Muslims, positively. Giving them the details of Sharia, giving them how to reform the society now, now that it is your own society, you have your own society at Medina, you have the political authority here, now you can enforce your own laws, now you can reform this society in your own methods, in your own ways. Secondly, the address to the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. Thirdly, the address towards the Munafiqeen. The most important element now at Medina was that of Munafiqeen. Because it was the hidden enemy of the Muslims. And they had become a menace to the Muslim society and this, you know, budding Islamic state, we may call it. Although there is no address to them directly by the words, Ya Yuhal Munafiqoon, you will never find this word in the Quran. Always they are also addressed, Ya Yuhal Lazina Aman. Why? Because they profess to be Muslims. Legally they were Muslims. So they are also addressed by the words, Ya Yuhal Lazina Aman. But when we see to the contents of the ayah, then we can understand, here actually, the address is to the Munafiqeen. But then secondly, these three addresses, they are interspersed with each other. To review the first 43 ayat, they were positive instructions to the Muslims. How to reform the society, what is the law of inheritance, how to protect the rights of women, how to protect the rights of orphans, etc., etc., how to have a sex discipline in your society, how to finish with the sex anarchy. All these things came in the ayat, in the beginning, 43 ayat. Then there was a brief reference to the people of the book, from ayat number 44 to ayat number 57. Then two very profound ayat, again positively towards the Muslims, given the basis of the Islamic state how to conduct the affairs of the Islamic State. Ya ayyuhu al-lazeen amanu wa ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-rasoola wa awli al-amri minkum fa in talaza'atum fi shayin farudduhu ila Allah wa al-rasool in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawmi al-aqir zalika khairun wa ahsan ta'wila And after that starts a very long discourse starting from ayah number 60 and it will end up in the ayah number 115 it's a continuous address to munafiqeen and three subjects are discussed regarding them. Number one, total obedience 
to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is essential. If you profess to be Muslims, you have to obey him in all respects, even all personal disputes that may arise between you. You have to accept him as the arbiter. You have to accept him as the judge. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا But this, is, this was very, you know, very difficult for them to swallow. A very bitter pill to swallow for the munafiqeen. He is also a man, human being. Why should we be obedient to him? We are ready to obey Allah. But why should we be obedient to him? You know, the same disease which today we have among the people who don't want to accept ahadith, who don't want to accept sunnah as the permanent source of Islamic law. They say, hey, Quran is sufficient for us. We don't need anything else. The same disease is appearing among the Muslims in this form. That was the attitude of the munafiqeen or Madinah. We are not ready to obey, obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are ready to obey Allah, Allah's word. Secondly, Qital fi sabirillah had become a very big burden for them, risking their lives, going out to fight the enemies of Allah, risking their lives, spending their money and wealth and belongings. So we had a long discourse about that. Thirdly, and it was, this concerned basically the munafiqeen, not of Medina, but munafiqeen at Bakka, munafiqeen in other tribes. For them, hijrah had been made obligatory. It was fard. You have to migrate to Medina now. And I told you the wisdom behind it. That now because an offensive had to be taken against the Aimmat al-Kufr, the leaders of Kufr, they were in Mecca, the Quraysh. And you know for that offensive, all the human resources that were available should have gathered at one place, at the base, so that an effective offensive could be launched from there. When Muslims were scattered, some are here, some are there, some are in that uh, tribe, some are living in that tribe, in that corner of Arabian Peninsula. So how could, you know, that force be available, which was required for an effective offensive? So hijrah was made compulsory, obligatory. And it has also become a reason for munafiqeen, you know, because they were hesitating to leave their hearts and homes and families and the places where they were born, where they were brought up, where their ancestors, you know, they were, they lay buried. Actually, it was very hard to do it. So these three things have been discussed, you know, in detail in this passage. Now we are in the middle of that. وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ إِسْمًا فَإِنَّمَا يَكْسِبُهُ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ Once again, a universal law. Whosoever earns a sin, verily he earns it against himself. You know, this Iman bil Akhirah, this faith in hereafter, it changes the outlook of human beings, absolutely. I have done something wrong to him. Well, actually, I have done something wrong to myself. Because I will have to bear the punishment for that in the hereafter. Which is the real life. So the outlook is absolutely changed. You have not done anything wrong to him. You have done something wrong to your own self, your own soul. You have doomed your own self. And Allah is ever knowing, all wise. And there is the second grade, you know, a higher level of this sin. And what is that? وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ خَطِيَّةً أَوْ إِسْمًا Whosoever earns a sin or some other wrong deed سُمَّ يَرْمَ بِهِ بَرِيًّا And then he casts the blame on somebody else who is innocent. I do something and put the blame on him. He has done it. But this is a crime of a higher degree. فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلَا بُهْتَانًا وَإِسْمًا عَظِيمًا بِسْمًا مُبِينًا but such a person has taken upon himself the burden, a very heavy burden of false charge, false allegation, and a very clear and manifest sin. So these are two ayat, you know, 
and they have they have something common between them in in the subject and there is an incident in the background a munafiq who was a muslim he committed a theft then he put the blame on a jew they knew because you know these jews are weak we are strong our tribes are strong us and khadraj and you know because us and khadraj are mainly muslims so i will get the support of the muslim society and i will go scot free and this jew will be blamed for this theft but when it was investigated he was found to be guilty himself but now his relatives came and they took his side no 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 he is he is our brother he is a muslim he must not be punished so it become became a hard issue for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know these things are practical examples you know to run the affairs of a state is not an easy job you have to look to the right to the left but you know because muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the prophet of allah so he decided rightly and he gave the punishment to the muslim although he was a legal muslim so that is the incident man yaksib isman fa inma yaksibuhu ala nafsi first of all he committed theft and he took the burden of his sin on him and to add fuel to fire wa man yaksib khatiyatan aw isman thumma yarmi bihi bariyan faqad ihtabala buhtan wa isma mubina wa laula fadlullah alayka wa rahmatuhu and oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had there not been the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bounty upon you la hamma taifatun minhum a group amongst these had tried and intended an yudilluk to lead you astray to lead you on the wrong path to lead you to the injustice wa ma yudilluna illa anfusahum but because allah is with you they can't take you to the right to the wrong path but they are actually they have taken themselves to the wrong path they have taken the ism and the, they have taken the burden on themselves wama yadruna min shay and they will ne- never be able to harm you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah is your protector wanzal allah alaik al kitab wal hikmata and this is one of the manifestations of allah's bounty on you that anzal allah alaik al kitab wal hikma allah subhanahu wa taala has sent down the book and the wisdom on you wa allama ka ma lam takun ta'lam and allah subhanahu wa taala has taught you what you what you didn't know before wa kana fadlullah alaik azima and you know the bounty of allah on you is very great sallallahu alaihi wasallam